Welcome to the video lesson on organic biochemistry. This lesson is meant to be an introduction of the terms and concepts associated with organic biochemistry. I will also be offering you some helpful hints along the way to help you remember some of the terms, so pay attention to those as well. First of all, what does it mean to be organic? What does it mean to be an organic compound? Well, in chemistry, to be organic means you contain uh, carbon and hydrogen. That all organic compounds have that in common. They contain carbon and hydrogen. Most are polymers. Polymers are long chains of molecules formed from what are called monomers. Well, practicing your prefixes here, Poly means many, while mono means one. So it makes sense that a polymer would be made up of many monomers, which is just one chain of molecules. Most organic compounds are formed by what is called dehydration synthesis, which is forming a polymer while losing water. You may recognize the term hydro within this word right here. Hydro means water, and you're probably familiar with being dehydrated, meaning you don't have as much water as you need. Notice this word over here, synthesis, which we had in our first unit, and synthesis means to build or to form. So dehydration synthesis is going to be to form a polymer, there's the synthesis part, while losing water, there's the dehydration part. The opposite of dehydration synthesis is called hydrolysis. This is the opposite process. This is breaking down a poly polymer by adding water to it. So hydrolysis adding water, while dehydration is losing water. In this diagram that's also included with your notes, you see an example of dehydration synthesis. Here's a polymer, and you know it's a polymer because it's two monomers chained together. And we're going to remove this H2O right here, and that, of course, is water. So removing the water is the dehydration sy synthesis, and that, of course, forms a polymer with the oxygen molecule in between the monomers. Now let's take a look at different types of organic polymers and their usefulness to living things. We're going to start off with carbohydrates. The main function of carbohydrates is to provide energy. Carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. There are two types of carbohydrates. There are monosaccharides, which are simple sugars like glucose. And the chemical uh, term, the chemical name for glucose is C6H12O6. Up here in this diagram, this is the, what a uh, glucose molecule would look like. And you can see six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Twelve hydrogen atoms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve. And six oxygen molecules. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? So that's how the glucose molecule is constructed. And that is an example of a monosaccharide. There are also polysaccharides. Again, mono one, therefore simple, poly many. So when simple sugars bond together and form longer chains of sugars, these are called polysaccharides. Examples include glycogen in animals and starch and cellulose in plants. Those are two examples of polysaccharides. One example glycogen in animals, and starch and cellulose, your example, in plants. Another type of organic polymer are lipids. 
The function of lipids in living things is to store energy. Examples of lipid, lipids include fats, oils, and waxes. Many lipids form when glycerol molecules combine with fatty acids. There are two types of lipids. There's the saturated lipid, and this is where the fatty acid has the most hydrogen atoms it can have. And then there's the unsaturated lipid, where the fatty acid has at least one carbon to carbon double bond. And these lipids are liquid at room temperature. A third type of organic polymer are nucleic acids. The function of nucleic acids in living things is to store and transmit genetic information. Nucleic acids are polymers that contain hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Monomer nucleic acids are called nucleotides. They have three parts, a five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. There are generally two types of nucleic acids. One is RNA, which is the abbreviation for ribonucleic acid, and then there's DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. A fourth type of organic polymer are proteins. The function of proteins in living things is that they are used by the body for growth and repair. Proteins are polymers that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Polymers are made up of what are called amino acids. Amino acids are made up of an amino group and a carboxyl group. Proteins contain bonds called peptide bonds. These are special covalent bonds that link amino acids to form one or more polypeptides. A protein is made from one or more of these polypeptides. Lastly, we want to talk about catalytic enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that act as catalysts in living things. What is a catalyst? A catalyst is a protein that speeds up the rate of chemical reactions. Factors that can contribute to this are uh, factors like temperature, pH, and other molecules can affect how enzymes work. You will recognize enzymes because they often end in the suffix ASE. That'll do it for our brief introduction on organic biochemistry. More to come as we apply this information and do more discussion in class.